this episode of the vlog, we're rounding up the top five excavators in New Zealand. So get ready to have a look at some of the largest excavators and the most unique excavators that some are still working, some are not still working in New Zealand. We're gonna show you where they are in New Zealand, what they mine, and a bit of history on each machine. A big thank you to everyone who's helped us with site access or archival photos or the details surrounding these machines that have made this video possible. Those include Bathurst Resources, CNR Developments, Windstone Aggregates, Oceana Gold, TerraCat, Komatsu New Zealand, and Doug Hood Mining. Up first, we have CNR Development's CAT 5130B. CNR actually has two of these machines, one of which, the one we saw, is parked at Winstone's Hanua Quarry. That quarry is just south of Auckland on the North Island, and that's where this 5130B is currently parked, awaiting its next dirt assignment. The CAT 5130 at the Hanua Quarry was originally purchased by Baker Construction in 1994. It was later sold to Downer Mining Limited, and then later in the 90s, CNR Construction purchased it back from the Goff and Hamer rental fleet, which have been operating the CAT 5130 out of the Martha Mine in the town of Waihee. And the machine currently has 45,000 hours on the clock. Here she is. You just really don't see a 5130 in New Zealand. This is like, well, this may be pretty standard issue gear for like any major mining district in Canada or North America for that matter. This is big for New Zealand. This is like rare big. Like, why did you bring this here big? <laughs> Cat 5130. So at one point it was working here at Hanua. It stripped much of the overburden and in its day it really produced, moved some cubes or cubic meters as they refer to here. Um, it is parked right now waiting on a slew ring. So whenever that part arrives and they can split it and put it in, then it may go back to work. But here it'll, here it'll rest and what a fine viewpoint for it. We're right at the top of Hanua here and it's got a, it's got a nice resting place that this is it for it. Got a good view. The old girl. See, it's simple though, like it's not much electronics, just an engine, put fuel in it, moves dirt. No? Of course, complete with a few spider webs. I mean, the cab's all right. Travel pedals. Fire extinguisher's new. Lots of glass, though. I mean, glass is good shape. Like, you could put it to work if they had the parts. So. But here she rests.
Coming in at our number four spot, we have Doug Hood Mining's Hitachi EX1900-6. This machine was delivered new back in 2007 and has spent its entire life pretty much working at Stockton Mine, removing overburden and loading out CAT 777s to get down to the coal that they mine at Stockton, which is metallurgical coal. This machine, again, was delivered new in 2007 and currently has 22,658 hours on it at the time of recording. Stockton is located on the South Island on the West Coast, just north of a town called Westport. Without further ado, here she is. Honorable mention here, and which is why the 1900 ranked higher than the 5130, is Doug Hood also used to run a Cat 5130B and Komatsu PC2000 at this mine. Sadly, those machines are no more. Not sure what happened to the 5130, but the Komatsu PC2000 ended up going to North America and is now painted white, may I add. So, honorable mention there with the 5130B they used to have and the Komatsu PC2000. Up next at our number three spot, we have Oceana Gold's Hitachi EX3600-6, electric, not diesel, electric. This machine is currently at Oceana Gold's McRae's Mine, which is on the South Island in the, in the Otago region, which is a huge prolific mining district for gold. It's currently working in the Fraser Pit and it was delivered new in 2024 and is the first and largest electric mining shovel in all of New Zealand. A little bit of history on Oceana, they originally commissioned the first EX3600 back 20 years ago and that legacy now continues with the EX3600-6 electric. It should be noted this machine is in a front shovel or face shovel configuration while every other production excavator at McRae's mine is in a backhoe configuration. As you'll see on the mine site, such as some of the 1900s and the other 3600s are all backhoe, this is the first machine in a front shovel or face shovel configuration, which makes it even more unique, which is why it has earned our number three spot on the rank. All right, let's go look at this thing. <laughs> you know it's a big machine when it comes with its own ladder, but this is New Zealand's largest EV and the latest addition to the fleet here at McRae's mine. This is an EX3600E. So E stands for electric. Hitachi offers this in both diesel and electric. The only difference being, instead of diesel in this, there's a 1200 kilowatt electric motor that drives all the hydraulic pumps. So the machine is pretty much the same as a diesel, but it's electrically powered. Everything else from the engine bay forward is pretty much identical to a diesel machine. So it's just the way you configure the power source. But let's have a walk up, have a look. You know it's a big machine when you can walk around on it easily.
hydraulic pumps. And then in here is the get this two hands here. Oh there we go. The electric motors in there. It's just dark in there, so there's not much to see, but take my word there's an electric motor in there. As you'll notice, as we come up top, no exhaust stacks. So again, this is as green as it gets here, folks. Uh, we've got a hydroelectric dam powering this thing. This machine is a fine example of Oceana Gold's initiative to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions or their carbon footprint from the McRae's operation by acquiring electric shovels like this. As you can see, no exhaust. It's just one big platform. Roomy. Fit a party of 20 up here quite well. Anyway, this so is the cab on the 3600. Pretty standard cab for Hitachi shovels, track pedals, 360 cameras, engine vitals, all that. Pretty standard. Hitachi makes a real nice, real nice shovel. So, yeah, unfortunately it's not working today, but give us a good chance to get up close and check it out. New Zealand's largest EV. Beautiful view down to the front of the shovel so the operator can see his trucks and see his active face. Well this electric shovel is powered by this cable. This is called a trailing cable which is just a fancy term for a big extension cord. This cable runs all the way to the mine's power grid. What's really interesting about this shovel is it's actually powered by a hydroelectric dam at Lake Aviemore. So this is as green as it gets at mining. You've got an electric shovel digging gold ore, so it's a critical metal, but it's also powered by a hydroelectric dam, so you've got a pretty green energy supply. It's called a bird's nest or bird's cage. So when the shovel's work in the face, if he wants to move a little bit, but his cable doesn't allow, he can actually pick this up with one of the teeth of the bucket and kind of mine or move his own cable. If he were to move to a completely new location on the mine, then you'd have to actually get a machine which we'll look at to come and move the cable, but this allows them to kind of move around a little bit without having too involved process. This is where the trailing cable or big extension cord comes in to the shovel. This is sort of a bit of a device that allows it to manage itself or mine itself. This is a front shovel. For some reason, Australians and Kiwis love their backhoes. Us Canadians love our front shovels. If you come to Canada, pretty much everything's in a front shovel configuration, but they run a lot of backhoes out here. So when the shovel has to move a greater distance than it could using the bird's nest in the active phase, so you had to jump to another phase. They use this tractor to mine or move the cable with the shovel because being electric, it can't propel on its own. It has to have the cable attached to it. So they just hook it up like this and drag the cable along and there's another attachment in the back, but it's a bit more of an evolved process, so if the shovel can stay in one spot and be productive, that's preferred over moving it with the tractor. At our number two spot, we have Oceana Gold's Cat 5230B, which was the first 5230B series to ever be delivered in the world. The 5230 series shovel dates back to the 90s. The 90s was a really exciting time for Caterpillar. Products like the 24 grader, 797, 994 wheel loader were all being released at that time and the 5230 was part of that era. The 5230B series came in the late 90s. Oceana Gold took delivery of the very first one. Of the 5230B series, there was only ever seven made, four of which were front shovel, three of which were backhoe. Again, the one that Oceana has is in backhoe configuration. So of the seven made, Oceana Gold took the first one being serial number 4HZ00231. Sadly, unlike our other machines in this roundup, this machine is no longer working. It is currently parked with 92,219 hours on it. It was retired in 2021, and throughout its working life of the 92,219 hours, it received four engine changeouts, and at the 52,000 hour mark, it actually was split and received a new slew ring. This machine is currently parked at Oceana Gold's Discovery Center, which is located adjacent to the Fraser's Pit. This is accessible to public, so if you did want to go check out this machine and take in the views of Fraser Pit and learn a bit about some of the mining at Oceana Gold, 
you can drive in right up to the machine, stand in the bucket and check it out. So I highly recommend you go see this machine, given that it's the first one delivered in the world and only one of seven that was ever made. It is definitely worth the trip to go see. So I highly recommend you go visit here. And finally, at our number one spot, we have Bathurst Resources Komatsu PC4000-6, the largest operational excavator on the North Island. It was uncertain when this machine was delivered, albeit there were two of them commissioned when this machine went to work. One of them was scrapped, one of them still works with 68,000 hours on it. The one that was scrapped, the bucket was actually saved from that machine and is currently in CNR Developments Museum in Cambridge and serves as the entranceway in which you walk through into the museum. So that machine was scrapped. The last remaining PC4000 on the North Island is currently working at the Rotawaro Open Cast Mine, which is a thermal coal mine located on the North Island near a town called Huntley, where they extract thermal coal, which is used in the production of energy. So they burn it, generate steam that turns turbines, creates electricity. So that machine is an overburden shovel. It removes overburden at the mine while smaller machines dig the coal. It's in a backhoe configuration and the bucket will hold 50 tons. So it'll load 789s and four passes. Again, that's a roughly 200 ton truck, 50 ton bucket. Just a quick update for you guys. The time of releasing this video, Bathurst has requested that we do not share any of the PC4000 footage that we acquired at Rotawaro. We're not sure the reason why. Uh, we are working with them to try and get out there and potentially film again or get clearance on some of the footage. But anyways, they have a Komatsu PC4000 out there. They've got three Libre shovels, a Libre 9400, a 9250, and a 994. Uh, the 994 is actually just replaced by a PC2000. So again, they've got four main overburden shovels out there. Uh, I know that the two, the Libre 9400 and the Komatsu PC4000 were both running uh, Trimble GPS. So 3D GPS, which is really unique. But again, we can't share any of that, kind of a shame. But all I have is some photos from the internet for you guys to see the number one excavator uh, in New Zealand, the Komatsu PC4000. And that concludes our roundup of the top five excavators in New Zealand. I hope we covered them all. If we missed something, let me know in the comments. If you have details or information or you want to share a story about some of the machines, you've worked on them, run them, please throw it in the comments. We'd love to hear it. That concludes our roundup. A big thank you to everyone we mentioned in the video who helped make site access or archival photos accessible to us and all the details. We really appreciate that. Again, Doug Hood Mining, CNR Developments, TerraCat, Komatsu New Zealand, Bathurst Resources, and Oceana Gold. So thank you again. We hope you enjoyed a step back in time to an era that once was. Mm -hmm.